Welcome to the Alabama A&M Football Review. Highlights, features, and analysis with head coach Connell Maynard. Brought to you by Protective Life, Union Chapel Missionary Baptist Church, and University Kia. Good evening and welcome to the Alabama A&M Football Review with head coach Connell Maynard. I am your host this evening, Ted Dixie. Coach, the Bulldogs go down to Tallahassee, Florida. Hadn't been there in decades since the old SIAC days. Bulldogs come up a little bit short, though, Coach. But tell us, how did you like that initial visit to welcome FAMU into the conference? Well, uh, I didn't like it too well because we, we took a hell. But we knew uh, there's a hostile environment. It's hard to win there. They was on an 11-game winning streak at home. Right. So we knew they was going to fight, and uh, we knew they weren't going to give up. We had a lead on here last year, and uh, they was able to come back and, and uh, get a win. And uh, we got down there and pretty much got almost the same situation. We had a lead, and uh, we weren't able to hold on to the lead. Uh, right before half, we was up 19-7 uh, to 7 with a minute, 15 seconds. They got the ball and was able to go down and score. And I thought that was a huge moment in the game, momentum, get their crowd back in the game, mm -hmm. get them pumped up uh, to switch momentum right before the half. Uh, because we get a stop there, we're up 19-7, to seven, and we get the ball coming out in the second half. So that was crucial, point in the game, turning point in the game, and then we came out in the second half and uh, went three and out. They went down and scored, and uh, then it, and that gave them the lead. And uh, they just never looked back from there. And uh, we had some opportunities to make some plays, and we didn't make them. And uh, they, made some, they made some plays on us. Uh, in the passing game when we was right there, but they made some great throws and great plays. So you got to take your hats off to those guys. Mm -hmm. uh, they made a couple more plays than we did, and uh, they got there and secured their home victory. Of course, the 11-game winning streak, Coach, as you mentioned, that looms in your mind just when you do the pregame scouting report, knowing they're going to be tough. But Coach Simmons had some difficulty getting in the plays. You got some penalties against them that we did not count on, but you're still leading, Coach. So I guess at some point the question may beg the question may be begged to be asked, what is it that you think you're going to have to do to just get over the hump, if you will? Sometimes you score one touchdown and the avalanche happens. Yeah, we just got to finish. You know, we got to finish. We got off the good starts. Uh, we're in the game at halftime for sure, and uh, we got to continue doing the things that we did in, in the first quarter, in the first half, to get us those leads, to score touchdowns and kick field goals, to get stops, cause turnovers. You got to continue doing those things one play at a time for four quarters. We're doing it for two quarters, three quarters and a half. We have to do it for four quarters. Uh, it's not rocket science. You got to keep making plays, continue doing the good things that you've been doing to, got it, to get you in that position. We heard coach, and I mentioned my coach Simmons calling the plays. Your offensive coordinator, Dwayne Taylor, calls your plays. But do you ever have any interaction when that happens? Like, do you hear the play call, and maybe do you suggest calling something else? I hear, I hear all the plays. And, uh, Every now and then, I, I, I will give a suggestion, mm -hmm. uh, not a suggestion to call a different play. I will just give a suggestion of a play. And, uh, you know, Coach, Coach Taylor's a great offense coordinator. When he gets in a rhythm, I don't want to mess his rhythm up and make him call a play because he know what he wanted. he's trying to do, what he's looking at, and what he's setting up. Okay. And uh, if, you, if you've been a coordinator, mm -hmm. you know good coordinators do that. They call mm -hmm. plays to see what defense is doing, to set up other plays. And so you just won't, don't want to call random plays. Okay. And so I'll suggest a play that I think may work and let him think about it and call it where he wants to or even try to set that play up too. So uh, he calls uh, probably 99% of the plays. We we'll say this week, Coach, coming up in the homecoming, we'll speak more about that on the show. Maybe a lot of pressure or more pressure on yourself this week than normal? Well, we need a win. We need a win in the, in the worst way. Um, and no better way than do it at home and on homecoming. So we got to go back and uh, go back to the drawing boards and uh, really look at special teams, what we're doing, our substitutions, uh, offense, uh, execution, and getting that ball and taking care of the football. I think if we take care of that football uh, Saturday night, we got a great chance of winning that football game. If we didn't take care of the ball, gave them some momentum turns and gave the uh, defense short fields, and so we can't do that right now. We got to take care of the ball, continue doing little things, and defensively too. You know, we can't give up a touchdown with a minute, fifteen seconds left in the half. Right. Uh, right. 
and 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 we got to avoid the big plays. You know, we got to do a better job of avoiding the big plays and make people grind their way down. I think our defense is good enough that if you got to run 12, 13, 14 plays, mm -hmm. you're probably not going to score mm -hmm. us. So uh, we know we got, we know where we at, we know what we need to do. Now we got to do it. Of course, the Bulldogs get a chance to do it. It's homecoming week. Make sure you check the traffic advisories as you go up 231, 431, past the hill, past the very new and exciting event center that will be opening shortly. When we come back, we'll talk more about FAMU and the Bulldogs here on the Alabama a and Football Review with head coach Connell Maynard. Bulldog fans, the Alabama a and Athletics Department is calling on you to help our student athletes. The Bulldog Strong Fund focuses on our student athletes by encouraging competition. During this global pandemic, competitive excellence takes on a new definition for our Bulldogs. This fund enhances our efforts to ensure our athletic department can service each team to become a prominent national competitor in all aspects of NCAA Division I athletics. Donation to the Bulldog Strong Fund will be used to cover student athletic scholarships, supporting recruiting efforts, and creating additional health and wellness initiatives. We are under tough and challenging times, but with your support, the Bulldog Strong Fund will thrive. Donations of all sizes make a huge difference and are greatly appreciated. Visit amusports.com to learn more about the Bulldog Strong Fund and how you can donate now. Thank you in advance for your continued support of Alabama A&M Athletics and our student athletes. Go Bulldogs! Hello, I'm Pastor Troy. The game of football is a lot like the game of life. You have to tackle your problems and block your fears. I just want you to know there is victory in Jesus. I want to invite you to worship with us at one of our anointed services at our Huntsville campus or our Madison campus. At the Fellowship of Faith, Jesus is exalted and the word is explained. We love Alabama A&M. Go Bulldogs! Thank you for watching the Alabama A&M Football Review with head coach Connell Maynard. I'm Ted Dixie. Coach, you got the lead at halftime. You're sitting there thinking we're in hostile territory. We got a chance to win this one again. We'll say that. The Bulldogs have been on the precipice of a great season. You're not out of this race. So what's important about the game this weekend besides winning? Well, first of all, like you said, we had a lead at halftime. Uh, 1914. 14. And we was upset mm. because we let them score right before the half. And uh, we let them back in the game, gave them the momentum. Even though we was up, we was upset because we felt like we should have been up by more. Uh, they was actually happy because, you know, we had control of the game the whole game. And with a minute, 15 seconds, we let them go down and get a touchdown and get back in the game with us getting the ball coming out. So both locker rooms was uh, reversed. You know, we was upset because we let them back in the game. And uh, they was happy because they was back in the game uh, after they got outplayed for the whole first half. And so, um, and that's what we talked about. We talked about going back out, doing the things that kept us this lead, told the defense, if they don't score, they can't win. Offense, if we don't turn the ball over and give them a short field, throw a pick right. six, let them right. score on offense, they can't win. And so those were the things that we want our guys to understand that we got to take care of the ball from here on in. Defense, we got to play solid. And that we got a great chance to win this game. And uh, we came out and uh, we, didn't, we didn't execute that game plan. And so uh, we got to get it done this week. We got a good Pathum Cookman team coming in. Uh, Terry Sims and Pathum Cookman just beat Grambling this week. Uh, so that was a huge upset if folks don't know beating Grambling, beating Bethune Cookman, especially when they were picked where they were to finish in the conference. Well, that's why you play the games, you know, uh, and you respect all fear none. So uh, we're going to respect Bethune, of course. Uh, Coach Sims does a great job with those guys. They always got a good football team. Another Florida school coming here on homecoming. 
Uh, they probably tied for first place. They, I think they won it on the conference. Uh, so they got everything to still to play for mm. on our side. The good news for us is we still control uh, our own destiny. That's right. If we went out uh, and Jackson went, uh, only losses to us, us, Fam and Jackson all have one loss, and then you got the tiebreaker. Now, Ooh. if we went out, <laughs> if we went out and Fam loses another game, and Jackson wins out after they beat us, we'll get it because we us and Jackson will be one loss apiece, but we'll right. beat Jackson and head up right. a battle. Mm, so we're still alive, fans. Don't get down. Uh, he's got a lot of football left. We can still control our own destiny. We just got to win out. Okay. Now, that's harder said than done, mm -hmm. but it's doable, and we're going to do it. You got to feel confident about that, Coach, as I do, even though you, it's different when you haven't made any progress during the week or in the season. We've seen progress. You're still adding student athletes to the lineup. We see different numbers in the participation report that we did the previous week. So now the question begs, what other changes would you might have? I know you got to give some away, but just some for the fans. What other things are you thinking about, maybe, about your roster? Uh, we got a couple guys going to play this week. They haven't played all year. Uh, the four game uh, rule, they come play the first four games. So we got a couple guys in that boat that's going to come back and going to help us. Uh, of course, I'm not going to tell Terry Sims, Bethune, Cookman, what positions right. they play. <laughs> but you'll see a couple more new faces, and uh, hopefully they can gel, uh, get the timing, the mm -hmm. uh with each other and the team, and uh, we make a run here. Now here's the big part, folks. It's homecoming week. There are lots of distractions, of course. There were fireworks last night to start the week. A big crowd over at Patton Hall. Yes, it is homecoming week, and students and the student athletes are into it. Coach, what events do you let your student athletes go to at homecoming? I just let them go to one. What's that? The football game. <laughs> and we'll talk more about that football game when we come back on the Alabama a and Football Review with head coach Connell Maynard. Don't get hit hard by low trade offers. Get up to $5,000 over Kelly Blue Book Fair Market Value for any trade at University Kia. Check out our large selection of new Kias. University Kia proudly supports Alabama A&M University football. Go Bulldogs! Union Chapel Missionary Baptist Church. A church with a big heart of love. Located at 315 Winchester Road in Huntsville, Alabama. Under the leadership of Dr. O. Wendell Davis. The worship services begin at 7.45 a.m. and 10.45 a.m. every Sunday. Now, we pray that you are blessed by our worship experience. Darrell brings new energy to the power plant. Julian's accounting is by the numbers. They're student interns from the College of Business and Public Affairs at Alabama A&M University, where marketing class connects with the community and companies come to recruit. So while Kyle strengthens his managerial skills, he's earning a business degree and experience at Alabama A&M University. Start here, go anywhere. Thank you for watching the Alabama A&M Football Review with head coach Connell Maynard. I'm Ted Dixie, about to be your weatherman. You're going to hear a little bit of rain behind us. We do have a tropical depression in the area, coach, that may come up this way about Wednesday or Thursday. But that's not going to stop what happens at homecoming. But you just said something that's interesting. You only let your student athletes go to one event, and that's the football game. Why? Well, homecoming is for the students, the alumni, uh, Bulldog Nation, uh, your parents, your brothers and sisters. That's what homecoming is for. Those events are for the students and, and the alumni to come back and enjoy, have something for them to do besides coming to the football game. Mm -hmm. uh, the, the players – we got to stay focused. We got to get ready to play because all these people that's coming back, they come back to see a win. Mm. And so we have to be prepared. My job is to get those guys prepared uh, to perform at a high level on Saturday. And all the distractions, you can't be focused. You can't play your best if you're distracted. If you're thinking about a step show or a concert or a comedy show. Uh, <laughs> and then everybody's coming into town. Your uncle, your cousin. Got ticket uh, requests. Yeah, your girlfriend, uh, ticket requests. Uh, everybody wants your time because they haven't seen you. Right. So your little cousin want to play video games. You know, your uncle want to go out and eat. And uh, now you're distracted. And so uh, they get in on Friday night. 
and you know, they want to stay up and play games all night long, and you got to get your rest and get ready to play a football game Saturday, and they right. don't understand that. Mm. And so now they mad at you. Now you frustrated because your cousin mad at you. And just a whole bunch of distractions that we don't need. So we don't let them do any of that. Uh, you know, try to keep them focused on the game so they can have their best performance. We're looking for that best performance, Coach. The injury bug has not hit your team this year. We have to give a big thanks to the strength conditioning team, Coach Beatty and his folks, and then also our trainers. I call her Emma P. And keep your folks on the field. Yeah, they're doing a great job. Uh, we, got, we got some guys that's banged up, but not out. And uh, you're going to have that. You play uh, when you play football. football. Coach. Yeah, it's you know, football. You're gonna have bumps and bruises. Got to put some tape on it, uh, especially when you play up early. You play a couple of FBS football programs that's bigger, faster, and stronger, and so they can kind of wear you down a little bit, beat up on you. Uh, but I guys expect that this football. Everybody's in the same boat. Other teams got people that's banged up ankles, elbows, and wrists. We complain, but your student athletes never complain about a schedule. Oh no, no, no. We're not gonna ever do that. We're gonna never hurt we're gonna that. play the schedule and uh, they understand it's a rough tough game and uh, it's a physical game it's not pool you right. know it's not table tennis right. you know it's football so um, they expect that and uh, they know they got to put some tape on it and play through it of course coach you didn't see coach Spady at the game um, we want to send our wishes and prayers to the Spady family for a quick recovery for him and also for comfort along that way but without any kind of motivation on the other side of the field other than winning a ball game, now, Coach, you get a chance to refocus this weekend, folks. It's homecoming on the hill. But when Cookman comes to town, kickoff is at 2 o'clock p.m., I would advise you to be on campus by 12. Yeah, it's going to be, it's going to be hectic. You know, I think um, not HBCU game there. Somebody else is going to be on campus also shooting for, for this uh, weekend also. So it's going to be a lot of people, uh, you know, might want to get here a little early than you normally do so you can find a good park, get in the stadium, and uh, be ready for the game by 2 o'clock. I'm going to add something to that, folks. The energy was just different last year than the outcome we wanted, but to see those stands full at the kickoff, Coach, that sets a whole different stage for a ball game. It does. It does. And it really gets the guys pumped up, fired up, ready to go, uh, seeing that 12th man and the stadium packed uh, when those guys run out. Um, so. I want you to come out and support these guys. Uh, they deserve it. Uh, they'll be prepared, and you'll get a good show. A little bit more about Bethune Cookman. Last year, when we went down there to Daytona to welcome them to the conference, even though the score wasn't indicative of how much in control the Bulldogs were, but we're going to expect Bethune Cookman to try to make some noise after coming off beating Grambling. Yeah, I mean they riding high. They want to know in the conference, um, and so they looking to go two and zero um, and and try to get. Try to win this conference. That's that's what you play everybody's for. That's goal. why you practice. That's, that's right. everybody's goal, and they're in good shape. They control their own destiny. That's right. So um, it, it's going to be a battle. We look forward to it. It's going to be a great football game. So y'all get your tickets and uh, come on out and watch a great football game. It's not only homecoming on the hill. It is an elimination game in the Southwestern Athletic Conference, the most competitive conference in the football championship subdivision. We'll talk more about that game and close out the show when we come back. The Alabama a and Football Review with head coach Connell Maynard. golf, if you make a mistake, there is a mulligan. Well, in God, if you make a mistake, there is mercy. Aren't you glad God has mercy for your mistakes? Hello, I am P.T., Pastor Troy. I want to invite you to come and worship with us at the Fellowship of Faith, where Jesus is exalted and the Word is explained. We love Alabama a and Go Bulldogs! Bulldog fans, the Alabama A&M Athletics Department is calling on you to help our student athletes. The Bulldog Strong Fund focuses on our student athletes by encouraging competition. During this global pandemic, competitive excellence takes on a new definition for our Bulldogs. 
This fund enhances our efforts to ensure our athletic department can service each team to become a prominent national competitor in all aspects of NCAA Division I athletics. Donation to the Bulldog Strong Fund will be used to cover student athletic scholarships, supporting recruiting efforts, and creating additional health and wellness initiatives. We are under tough and challenging times, but with your support, the Bulldog Strong Fund will thrive. Donations of all sizes make a huge difference and are greatly appreciated. Visit amusports.com to learn more about the Bulldog Strong Fund and how you can donate now. Thank you in advance for your continued support of Alabama a and Athletics and our student athletes. Go Bulldogs! Don't get hit hard by low trade offers. Get up to $5,000 over Kelly Blue Book fair market value for any trade at University Kia. Check out our large selection of new Kias. University Kia proudly supports Alabama A&M University football. Go Bulldogs! Union Chapel Missionary Baptist Church. A church with a big heart of love. Located at 315 Winchester Road in Huntsville, Alabama. Under the leadership of Dr. O. Wendell Davis. The worship services begin at 7.45 a.m. and 10.45 a.m. every Sunday. Now, we pray that you are blessed by our worship experience. Companies hunger for our food scientists. Here, a new generation manages our cities of tomorrow. The discovery of hardier plants, healthier animals, is growing at our research station. Alabama A&M University where new designs and ideas are put to the test. Be a researcher in our labs or a forestry fire dog in our fields. Alabama A&M University. Start here, go anywhere. Welcome back to the Alabama A&M Football Review with head coach Connell Maynard. What do you do homecoming week? You either wear maroon or wear your Divine Nine Greek paraphernalia, whatever they want to call it. But coach, you just want people in the stands. That's it. We just want everybody here. We want that 12th man rocking and loud and behind our team and uh, help cheer us on to a win. You said our team. Yes, and it's your team as well. Season tickets can still be bought, but there's a game already played. That's not the point. The point is making a contribution to your HBCU. And yes, we'll take contributions from anyone else because of the culture that we have here. You're going to see that on display with the homecoming game. Now, Coach, back to Bethune-Cookman. They play hard. They got a lot of Florida athletes where everybody says, go recruit Florida. It hadn't turned over in the win column for them yet, except they beat Grambling last week. Yeah, I mean, that's, that's all that counts. You know, the first three games are, are non-conference games uh, where you learn about your team and, uh, you know, the, your strengths and your weaknesses. And they played up, too. They played up some games, and then uh, they got back to conference, and they beat a good Grambling football team. So. But Thorne Cooper got a very good football team. Coach Sims doing a great job coaching those guys. I've known Coach Sims for a long time from my MEAC days. And uh, so it's going to be a battle. It's going to be a battle. It's going to be a great contest. And uh, we look forward to this challenge. It's not going to be easy. Now, Coach, I call this the most competitive conference of the football champion subdivision. That will be the Southwestern Athletic Conference. So the Thorne Cookman's beating Grambling. Texas Southern shuts out Southern. Every week is a very good contest. You're going to see some good football. You are. You are. And you're going to see some people win some games that you didn't think you was going to win. We got a lot of great football coaches that got added to this conference. And they're doing a super job of recruiting and getting the talent on campus. And you got to come to play every week. You got to come to play every week. Every game is going to uh, uh, come down to the wire in the fourth quarter. And both teams will have a chance to win or lose a football game. And so you got to execute at a high level for four quarters if you want to be successful in this league. Question, Coach, and this is the last one from social media. Some of the several people are asking, will we see a freshman quarterback play this year? Uh, I don't know. I mean, everything's, anything's possible. But it depends uh, on him and his development? Right, it depends on him and his development. You know, if he keeps developing and we think he gives us a chance to win the football game, uh, you get to see him, you know. Um, and that so, goes for any other position as well, right? Go for every position. Whenever you become the best, that's when you play. You become the starter, you know. And I told those guys that from day one, and I mean it. When, whenever you become the best at whatever position it is, you become the starter. So that gives guys the motivation to uh, keep fighting all year long, mm -hmm. keep improving, uh, because if you do, you're going to get to play. Now you've got several student athletes we know are vocal. 
Juice Jenkins being the primary one. Mm -hmm. What do you think he'll be like in practice this week? Well, oh, he'll be fired up. He'll be fired up. It's um, Which is, an, he's another. He's usually fired up, coach. Yeah, he, <laughs> he's usually fired up. <laughs> but he understands that we got to have a good week of practice and uh, we got to execute on Saturdays after having a good week of practice. Uh, Bethune is uh, his home, you know, his right. house right across the street. Set the record from getting tickets to a game now. Yeah, so it's, <laughs> it's a big game for him. Mm -hmm. it's, uh, and so we got to kind of keep his emotions down, mm -hmm. uh, especially on game day, because he's going to be pumped up, fired up, ready to go. And uh, so we, we got to not only get his win for us, we got to get it for him too and the Florida guys. And of course, the win for you, the alumni, coming back as Coach mentioned. So go to aamutix.com to get your tickets. Please be on campus by 12 o'clock. There are traffic changes to game day events. So please pay attention to our public service department as they guide you around campus and around 231, 431 and Meridian Street. But we thank you all for coming and participating with us. Coach, you get the final word. You know what, with everything that's going on, you should already be on campus Friday night. <laughs> Just go ahead and stay on over and you'll be here at 8 o'clock when you wake up. And come on to the football game, support your Bulldogs. That will do it for this week's edition of the Alabama a and Football Review. Bulldogs have homecoming this week. Bethune-Cookman comes to town. Kickoff is at 2 o'clock p.m. That means you will hear the pregame on 90.9 FM WJAB starting at 1.30 p.m. So for Coach Maynard, I'm Ted Dixie. Thank you so much for watching the Alabama a and Football Review with the head coach. I'm El Maynard. Bulldog fans, the Alabama A&M Athletics Department is calling on you to help our student athletes. The Bulldog Strong Fund focuses on our student athletes by encouraging competition. During this global pandemic, competitive excellence takes on a new definition for our Bulldogs. This fund enhances our efforts to ensure our athletic department can service each team to become a prominent national competitor in all aspects of NCAA Division I athletics. Donation to the Bulldog Strong Fund will be used to cover student athletic scholarships, supporting recruiting efforts, and creating additional health and wellness initiatives. We are under tough and challenging times, but with your support, the Bulldog Strong Fund will thrive. Donations of all sizes make a huge difference and are greatly appreciated. Visit amusports.com to learn more about the Bulldog Strong Fund and how you can donate now. Thank you in advance for your continued support of Alabama A&M Athletics and our student athletes. Go Bulldogs! Parker is 29 and learning to communicate again. The students teaching him earn a degree with 100% job placement. But the real reward is changing a life. At Alabama A&M, it's a university where agencies actually go to recruit compassionate students who help themselves by helping others. Service is sovereignty at Alabama A&M University. Start here. Go anywhere. Bulldog fans, thank you for joining us today for the Alabama A&M University Football Review. Bulldog faithful, we encourage your support and participation. Until next time, go Bulldogs!